All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today marks first day in December. Um, last night we ended up going two and three, meaning we have strung together two losing days in a row, which you don't like to see, obviously. But hopefully December holds some new stuff for us here as we move our way into a new month. Um, to recap, November against the spread, we're 55% last month, which... Like, I can't complain about 55%. It's about a percentage above being positive. But it's not the right home about, right? So 55% last month, um, and that took a couple strong days. We did have a couple absolute dud days in there. So I guess it all evens out in the wash. But 55% in November, I do want to get closer to 60% here in December. So uh, let's see if I can do it. But um, let's move on to today's slate, guys. We got nine games on the board to start December. Um, let's bounce back from a two and three night last night. Um, first up, we got the Pacers hosting the Hawks. Pacers point and a half point favorites here. The Atlanta Hawks now have started to win some away games. They are two and nine against the spread on the road. I was calling them the Atlanta Pigeons when they were playing on the road. Now they've started to win a couple games here. Uh, the Hawks are going to be without Bogdanovich. Um, Cam Reddish is questionable. And then Hunter is still out indefinitely. And then on the Indiana side of things, Justin Holiday now out indefinitely. And Miles Turner is questionable. I might be riding with the dogs here on the road, Atlanta. I mean, they've started to show a little bit of promise on the road. They're 9-12 and 12 against the spread team right now. And the Pacers quietly have a positive against the spread record. I might go with the dogs here. I think my lean right now is going to be to the Hawks. Hopefully they can continue to keep this away grind going. Because if you guys know, and if you've missed videos, if you live in the Rocks, these Hawks have been terrible. Terrible against the spread on the road this season. But now they've put two of them, two wins together in a row. So um, I think we might try and ride the uh, the Hot Hawks here on the road. So plus a point and a half. I think the Hawks are the better team than the Pacers, um, even without Bogdanovich, especially if Miles Turner's out for the Pacers. So I'm going to be riding, or leaning, I should say. Make sure to check the pin comic, guys. You know how it works. Right now I'm going to go through each and every game, give you my lean, give me where my head's at, give you where my you know gut might be initially, but um, the pinned comment is going to be where my final plays are, what I'm actually playing tonight. So make sure to check the pinned comment. But as of right now, I'm leaning to the away team, the underdogs, the Hawks here. Next up, we have the Magic hosting the Denver Nuggets. Magic 8.5 point favorites. Um, 207.5 is the total in terms of injuries. Green questionable for Denver. Um, and on Orlando, we got a few injuries here. It looks like uh, Cole Anthony upgraded to probable. Jalen Suggs out indefinitely. Um, and Michael Carter Williams downgraded out. And same thing with Moore. Uh, to me, this is going to be a stay away game. I don't think that this Denver team deserves to give eight and a half points to anybody right now until they start being being a little bit more consistent. Um, obviously, they did have that big win against Miami, which we were on the wrong side of there. But they did have six straight losses before that. And this Orlando team is obviously in the dumpster right now, especially with some injuries they've been dealing with. Makes them either, even worse. Um, but I just don't see Denver being an eight and a half point team over the Magic. So I'm staying away from this game. If I had to give a lean, if you put a gun to my head and say, take, stake your claim, make your lean here, weirdly enough, I'm going with the Magic. I would lean Magic plus eight and a half um, at home against the Nuggets team that really has been up and down. But this is going to be one that's going to be pretty damn hard. You're going to have to twist my heart. I'm going to twist my arm pretty damn hard to get me to put this on my final ticket. But I would lean Magic just because I think it's a big number. Next up, we have the Wizards at home taking on the Timberwolves, Timberwolves won two in a row. Wizards lost their last bout um, here uh, against San Antonio. We we're on the wrong side of that one. You might be hearing that a lot because that's two days in a row now with losing records. So when I say we were on the wrong side of that one a couple nights ago, we were on the wrong side of that one a couple nights ago. These, um, these two teams are very different teams. Like the matchups for me in this one are very confusing. But I think, you know, I guess the backcourt, you would say uh, Washington has that upper hand, but the front court, uh, Minnesota has that upper hand. No no huge injuries on Washington side of things. Um, Minnesota side of things looks like Vanderbilt's questionable. Anthony Edwards is questionable, and McDaniels is questionable. I'm going to lead Washington here. Um, for whatever reason, I seem like I continue continuously bet against the Timberwolves, um, or at least lean against the Timberwolves, but we're doing it again tonight. Washington minus three at home is going to be my lean here. Um, next, we have a good game here. Miami Heat taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I say it's a good game because this, this Cavs team continues 
to impress me, the Covered and Cavaliers. And they're getting seven and a half points tonight against the Miami Heat, who are, you know, um, I mean, I thought this Heat team was good, and I still think they're good. I know they've had a plenty of injuries that they've been dealing with, but as of late, they've been going win-loss, 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 back and forth here. And their against the spread record is now 13-8. and eight. It was a lot better if you look, I think, just like a week and a half ago, too. Um, this Cleveland Cavaliers team, 15-5-1 against the spread. That being said, if Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Tyler Hero all play, which those guys are all questionable, so pretty much the whole Heat team's questionable. In fact, it's, it's also Dwayne Deadman as well. So if those guys play, I am going to look for the Heat to bounce back here because remember what I said, they've been going win-loss, 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 win-loss. Well, the last time out, it was a loss, and Cleveland had an absolute upset and huge win over Dallas. I like the spot for Miami at home a little bit more than I do for Cleveland, so I would lean Miami, but uh, that's, a, that's a big number. It could be a, a pre- preventative factor in putting that on the final ticket because... Uh, I would much rather this, especially with Miami coming off a loss and with injuries and everything, I'd much rather this be, you know, a five and a half to six type spread. But seven and a half is a lot to ask for. Um, So uh, my lean is very dependent on if Bam Adebayo, if Jimmy Butler, and if Tyler Hero play. And that should be in your mind too, by the way. Those are the best players on the Heat, right? So take that for what it's worth. But um, I can't rag on the Cavaliers, really. I'm not betting against the Cavaliers here. I'm betting with the Heat in a comeback spot at home if they get healthy because this Cavs team's pretty pretty legit when it comes to covering, even without um, some of the guys that they've been without with, Colin Sexton included. Um, next up, we have my Boston Celtics hosting the Philadelphia 76ers here. Celtics two-and-a-half-point favorites at home, and this Sixers team seemingly has gotten healthy now. They got their guys, you know, they look a little bit better. Um, They've lost a few games, but they beat up on Orlando uh, a couple nights ago. Actually, I don't even think they beat up on them. I think it was actually a more close game than I would have thought. Um, But the Celtics are hoping to have Schroeder back and hoping to have Robert Williams back, and Jalen Brown is questionable still with that hamstring. I don't want to beat around the bush here. I told you guys... Celtics are blacklisted from here on until, you know, further notice. This team, I don't know what they are. I don't know what my home team's definition is. I don't know if I can trust them with my money. Whereas compared to years past, I would just bet the Celtics every single night just because, you know what, that's my team. This team's so frustrating and inconsistent that I haven't been able to get myself to bet on them in a couple games. And honestly, they have to show me something before I start doing that. And that being said, you guys know. I admit that I'm biased when I do this, and I love the comments. They're like, why don't you try to be biased? Or why don't you try to be not biased? Because I don't want to. I love the Celtics. I've grown up loving the Celtics. I've been a Celtics fan for, you know, I don't know, my entire life. Yeah, good luck pulling the bias out of there. So I can't bet the Sixers. I can't bet against the Celtics. But I do like the Sixers in this spot a little bit more than the Celtics. Um but I can never get myself to pull that trigger. I love watching the Celtics. Um, so, you know, I, I would not bet them in this spot. But I also, you know, I, I can't see myself pulling the trigger against 76 or so. Bias fan alert. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I sorry, I don't even want to. People, you know, why don't you pull the bias out of it? Because I don't want to. I love the Celtics. Um, and I'll bet them in spots that I like them, but I haven't liked them in many spots lately. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, moving on to the Bucks hosting the Charlotte Hornets here. Bucks eight-point favorites. At home, the Charlotte Hornets team, man, uh, they've lost a couple in a row here. They lost to Houston, which I don't know how they did that. They lost to Houston. They lost to Chicago, which is understandable. We were on the right side of that one. And Milwaukee, meanwhile, has won seven straight in a row. I guess I expect that to continue. Milwaukee seems like they're finally hitting that stride. Um I don't necessarily love betting against Charlotte because I think they are a good covering team. They're 12 and 11 against the spread this year. Um, but on the, on the road, they're five and nine against the spread. They're way better against the spread home team. Um, so I am going to be, to be rolling with the bucks here at home minus eight. Um, in terms of my lean, that's going to be one that that's a 50, 50 right now, whether or not I want to sink my teeth in and put that on the final ticket. But that is my lean as of right now, bucks minus eight at home. Um, next up we have the Pelicans 
facing off against the Mavericks here. These teams just played, I believe, early November, if my memory suits me correctly, um, with Dallas getting that win. Kristaps Porzingis is questionable. He left last game. Um, Willie Cauley-Stein's downgraded to out. Same thing with Frank Nito Quinta. Um, the Pelicans, one fit out of the last four. And if you were to tell me that the Pelicans beat the Wizards, the Jazz, and the Clippers in their last four games... You know, and then only lost to the Jazz as that that fourth as that that loss in the last four. I tell you, you're crazy. This Pelicans team is playing way better basketball. Um, they're getting three and a half points at home here. I don't hate them in this spot. I would definitely lean Dallas if Porzingis plays, but I would not like if someone told me that they're betting Pelicans tonight. I would not be able to talk them off that cliff. This Pelicans team has been playing a lot better as of late, and it's kind of crazy because. Um, like I just mentioned, those teams that they've beat are legit teams. It's not like they beat up on, you know, a couple bad teams or anything like that. Like they played legit competitors and have been beating them. Um, so again, with Pork Zingas in, if I were to be completely honest, I know I just got finished hyping up this Pelicans team. I still absolutely lean towards the Mavericks here. Um, minus three and a half. But if someone were to tell me, Hey, I'm betting Pelicans tonight. I can't talk you off that. They are hot. You know, the Pelicans have fire coming out their ass because they are hot. Um, next up, we have the Thunder playing the Rockets. And, and I don't know, is it just me or have these two teams played each other a million times this year already? I, I don't know. I, I feel like they have. I think that they've they've played a million times. Last time out was just a couple nights ago. Um, Houston blew out OKC. OKC is now at home. Um, and I like OKC in this one. Minus three at home. Revenge spot. I believe, fully believe in revenge spots. The Rublin covering Thunder here, 13-7 and seven against the spread. Um, and the Rockets, you know, now they've been playing a little bit better. I guess you could say the Rockets are a hot team right now. The Hot Rockets, they've won three in a row. They beat they beat Chicago, they beat Charlotte, and they beat OKC. So, you know, their, their talented teams of teams that they've beat have gone down a little bit here, but they've pulled themselves out of the hole. But I totally see OKC being able to be like, okay, you know what? You beat us last time just a couple of days ago. Why don't we return the favor here? And I feel like, um, again, these teams, played of a million, these teams have played a million times this year. OKC uh, lost, or OKC took them down um, handily. Uh, back in November, as uh, back in earlier in November. So uh, I like the Thunder here, uh, minus three against the Rockets. The lean for me uh, might be playing it because I do believe in the revenge spots entirely. So uh, we will see. Make sure to keep an eye on the pin comment for that one, guys. Next up, we have the Clippers uh, hosting the Kings here. Clippers, seven and a half point favorites against the Sacramento team. The Kings did just play last night um, and got beat by a bunch by the Lakers. Um, Harrison Barnes questionable, Mo Harkless questionable, Marvin Bagley III questionable. Eileen Clippers here. Clippers coming off of a loss to the Red Hot Pelicans just a few nights ago, and they got smoked by almost a 20-point loss. And then they lost to the Warriors the night before. Two losses in a row here. I see the Clippers being able to bounce back. That 7.5 points is a lot. I might buy down to 6.5 just, just for a little peace of mind, but... Um, Clippers to me is the lean here at home for sure. Um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for our spreads tonight. We're going to go through, uh, you know, our hashtag of the day. If you don't know what the hashtag of the day is or the shout out of the day is, you know, oh, I give you guys a hashtag every single day, a different hashtag. Sometimes it's a repeat, but a different hashtag to keep you on your toes. Last night's hashtag was hashtag fade. And all you got to do is take the hashtag that I'm going to give you in a few minutes, drop it in the comments with your lock of the night, with your ticket. And if you have a positive night, if you have a good ticket, if you have a good pick, you guys have a chance to be featured in tomorrow's video. And here we go. We had Alex Eagle saying hashtag fade. My only pick of the night is Lakers money line. And he put 10 units on it. I don't know, Alex. I mean, hey, you hit, so I can't call you crazy. But putting 10 units on the Lakers right now, oh, my goodness. I could never get myself to do that. But he hits. That's a 10-unit dub for Alex there. Um, today's hashtag of the day is going to be hashtag get hot. Get hot. We have to do what the Rockets and we have to do what the Pelicans have done as of late. We need to get hot. So drop your hashtag get hot in the comments with your lock of the night, with your picks. And if you guys hit, you guys have a chance to be featured in tomorrow's video. And as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where my final plays will be, what I'm actually riding with tonight. I like to take you guys through each and every game, give you my thoughts, you know, if, if it helps you, whatever. But I like to, you know, brainstorm the games a second time as I do these before the video records. And then also, you know, as we're doing. So 
Make sure to keep an eye on that pinned comment. Um, subscribe to the channel, guys. Like, use the hashtag of the day, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Let's get hot. Come on now. Let's get hot. Catch you guys in the next video.